Day 9 in Anaheim, you're watching Integra TV's coverage of General Convention. Hello, I'm James Joyner. At this point in the convention process, time is getting short for resolutions to be brought to the floor for voting. Yesterday, the House of Bishops surprised many here at convention with their swift affirmation of Resolution CO56, calling for a pastoral response and an open process for considering theological and liturgical resources for same-gender relationships. Our cameras were there as the House of Bishops adjourned. I'm very proud of this church. What we've just done is pass a resolution that um, I think allows for generosity of the bishop in the way that they understand um, uh, same-sex blessings and in jurisdictions where there's civil marriage. It certainly helps people in the Diocese of Vermont. I feel very good about the, what the House of Bishops did today. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful movement and it allows us to keep discerning but also moving forward in more concrete ways. We worked very hard to come up with a, with a resolution that would uh, be one that would bring along as many people as possible on the journey that we pretty much feel we're all on. And I'm absolutely bowled over. Uh, I think we work very hard to come to really as close to a consensus as I think we're going to have on these issues and I'm, I'm pleased with the way it went. Well, it's stunning. I do think that we're where we are today because we've built on some hard, hard work by a wide variety of people over the last number of years to simply help people understand what it means to be in an open and inclusive church. They've opened us up and it's a wonderful day for all of us. It's a huge step forward. When I think about what the church was like when I was ordained and where we are today, you know, hallelujah. Brian McLaren is an author, speaker, pastor, and networker among innovative Christian leaders, thinkers, and activists. Last night, he preached at the L.A. Experience, and he preached again at today's Daily Eucharist. Integra TV sat down with Dr. McLaren to get his perspective on some of the issues facing this convention. If churches, denominations, congregations, individuals approach issues of human sexuality with this theological mindset that I just want to know what the right position is, and then I can make the judgments. It's almost like reaching for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, I know good and evil. Now I have power. It's unproductive. Uh, so what I find in so many pastors, and I, I speak in a whole range you know, of churches, I, I, I consider it a real honor, but I'm with Roman Catholics and Pentecostals and everything in between. And even among people who are very conservative on the issue of sexuality, they, when you talk to them in private, when they're out of the politics, they say, look, this is my cousin, this is my uncle. Um, I've got parents in my church, this is their daughter, you know? And suddenly, when the problem is humanized, when it's made pastoral, and not politicized in just sort of a knowledge war, their, their hearts soften. Yesterday and today, there have been a few moments when I've just been praying and thinking, and, and I've sensed that, that if a corner is being turned on uh, full welcome and inclusion, of the baptized at all in all dimensions of of the life of faith that suddenly the strategy of people who've been working hard to get us to this point now has to change e even the image of when you drive into it when you're turning a corner driving a car you you have to brake and slow down and there's and then there's a point where you start to speed up again you know uh, so you don't use the same strategy at the beginning, middle, and end of turning a corner. That's why I think there's a moment now where wherever progressive voices are making progress and, and getting policy to back up the things that many of us have been working and praying for, as that happens now, we have the added new responsibility of being peacemakers with the people who are uncomfortable with this. That means being sure to talk about God uh, and to talk about this as a spiritual thing. Um, and because one of the things that happens sometimes is that conservatives feel they're the ones who talk about God and other people talk about sociology or something. And we have to bring those two together. All of 
Love Convention is talking about marriage equality, so we took time to find out what's the buzz. To be married uh, is a legal question, it's a civil question, and uh, that so that we have the same rights that uh, heterosexuals have, uh, that there's no, no second class citizen. We won't be in the back of the bus and we won't be separate but equal, we'll be the same. That everybody gets the same rights as everybody else. Marriage is for everyone. Oh, it's it just, it just that, you know, uh, it, it's sort of like uh, the, the back in the 60s where uh, equal rights for everyone and, you know, it, one would love to see that happen. You know, uh, it's, it's, uh, you're not, not asking uh, for, for anyone's approval of, of something that you're entitled to. Marriage equality is offering to all of God's children the same types of gifts that we give everyone else. Um, I have a wonderful son who is gay and he has a beautiful partner and the fact that he too will be able to be uh, married is uh, a blessing for me and a blessing for him and blessing for God's creation. No flashback of Integrity's presence at General Convention would be complete without taking time out to talk to Gil Grady and Dottie Fuller. Before we left to go on a trip which ended in Anaheim, our rector had told us that he would no longer give us communion, having discovered that we were a lesbian couple and we refused to confess that as a sin. Uh, so we were pretty wounded when we got here. We were coming to prevent that from ever happening to anybody else. And at that convention, um, um, presiding Bishop Browning was elected. And we left there having heard the words, in this church, there will be no outcasts. We were so loved by the people of integrity that that was a secondary gain we had not expect, expected. I was told by someone before we came to convention that this conversation would be very different and I didn't believe them, and it has been mm -hmm. extremely different. Yeah. I'm feeling very positive about it. I think the bishops are doing wonderful things, and the House of Deputies is doing even greater things, and I think it's wonderful. I think it's a remarkable day, though, when we are open to having everybody be uh, free to apply to be a bishop or anything else they want to be. Tomorrow's show will take a special look at our 10 days here in Anaheim as the convention comes to a conclusion. But this won't be a teary-eyed look backward, but rather a look forward as we leave Anaheim and celebrate the good work that has been accomplished here. In the meantime, Integra TV is poised to report on every important outcome. If you want more in-depth coverage, check out our blog, find us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. Integrity covers everything you want to know about the convention. You can find links for all the different resources at IntegrityUSA.org. That's it for this edition of Integra TV. Join us again tomorrow. I'm James Joyner. Thanks for watching.